What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what. B is a bit. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying B? out on a night of bloody stars over? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> or just gentlemen right now. I'm broadcasting from Greece, and I'm Chris Avelisariou, uh, the first international big poet laureate of the National Big Poetry Foundation on the festival of 2017. And next, um, they give me another award too because they love me <laughs> since everybody else except some of us <laughs> is in the, on the festival in Connecticut I will take the role of uh, the host uh, of the um, virtual part of the festival and I will present you some great poets amazing poets that sent us videos from America and from all over the world. Tomorrow there will be a session that when I, uh, we had a, a Zoom some days before and uh, our new rates that are uh, great personalities and poets. Uh, spoke about uh, their lives and recited poems. Um, also, some some of our um, uh, laureate emeriti, emeriti laureate came to the Zoom, and this uh, combination uh, of all these poets, all these exceptional, extraordinary, extraordinary poets and um, the serenity of Debbie Tosun Kilde, our CEO, created a session, created a, a, a meeting that I won't, I, I, I will never forget. So I hope that you all also won't forget and watch it tomorrow. Also, don't forget to, <laughs> to make a donation and keep uh, the arts alive uh, and the NBPF alive because it is difficult to sustain a, a whole thing, a whole festival um, without money. We do it all these years, but uh, it is difficult. So we start, uh, I will give the, um, the what uh, to Mr. Passe that came here because he couldn't go to the festival. And uh, I will ask him to say something. Uh, he said a lot uh, on his video that we will show right afterwards. You can talk, Mr. Paselli. I give you no matter how much time. Well, I, I didn't prepare anything to say. Uh, so, uh, hey, how important the foundation is. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the, the foundation is, <coughs> is very important, has been very important personally to me uh, <coughs> by giving me an outlet. Uh, for my work, uh, otherwise I, I I probably wouldn't have uh, uh, anywhere to go, uh, literally. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and I'm very sorry I can't be up at the festival. We uh, attempted to get there, but um, but uh, Mother Nature and global climate change uh, thought otherwise about it, and uh, and we were sort of well uh, the. Obviously, everybody knows that the floods washed out uh, train service uh, in New York and New Jersey and uh, parts of uh, Connecticut. 
so we weren't able to make the festival and that i regret um so but i'm i'm glad we have this and i'll i'll, I'll be able to see the festival in connecticut also online so that that's good that's good and uh, i am very happy uh, to to see you here because i you are a poet that i love oh, you sorry. and uh, your uh, the, the your great uh, wife oh. you are a real a real artist and um, this for me it is very emotional yes well, anyway, that's part it That's is very emotional that you are here with me. Yeah. For me, it moves That's... me a lot. Oh, okay. Thank you. Same uh, here. We Greeks are too emotional. Very much. <laughs> us, us Italians are not. <laughs> we, we're very cool and calm. <laughs> well, we, I, I will start your video because you said too much there, too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carlo Parcelli here. I'm sorry we couldn't make it up to Connecticut. We tried, but the floods in New York were uh, making it kind of dicey. So uh, so here I am with the video. Uh, I first heard of uh, Jack Hirschman 50 years ago from a friend of mine who wanted to study Mandarin and move closer to the source by moving to California. And um, he wrote back to me very soon after he moved how much he loved California and the lively poetry scene, and how he'd been down to a North Beach bar and gotten into a fist fight with a San Francisco poet named Jack Hirschman. Uh, this poem is called, it's, actually Jack published this poem in his, the last anthology he did before his passing. It's called Barry the Baptist Reads About Julian Assange in The Guardian over, over a Camden's at the Blind Beggar. And uh, Barry the Baptist is uh, a character in uh, Guy Ritchie films, uh, uh, played by the character actor Lenny McLean. But uh, this is for Julian Assange and Jack Hirschman. What you make of this Blake Assange wasting away in Belmarsh for grassing on them Yankee gangsters? What we blokes should be aping the circus, or what the Yanks call it, the company, the, the CIA. And when they get caught thieving and murdering, they put the constable away. Throw truth in solitary till it bounce off the walls. Not to be on our housey's end for what bold Belmarsh Billy right in the head confuses his baton with a pen or truth for a gun. Where Charlie Craig on time and Charlie Bronson too. Locked down 23 hours a day. Bloody hard work up a top work up a froth about what Ivan do when the shit's on the other bloke's shoe. I see what them stateside mugs done, shoot none on Hardy from Whirly Birds, leaving them to die where they lie, and taking shots at a Samaritan with his kids in the SUV too, wee ones with their little pony lunchboxes on their way to school. Last time that be under the bow bells, it be the bloody Bosch. Them fucking Yankee wee whackers laughing. They be a brutish, inhuman lot. It's in their blood shagging their guns. All petty Paul about losing their slaves and hunting the red man like they's bison just for sport. And the Aussies, too. What slavish do what the Yanks tell them to with two centuries of target practice. A Reich's worth of salvos upon the abos. Oi, they learn from the best. A nick off the old imperial block. What our lot once stretched east to west. Pox Britannica, the East India Company, and all that rubbish. Now to die for a curry and a flat. They set this buzzer up for shagging a couple of Swedish birds. And of course, money exchanged hands. Ecuador's elite got their silver. Five billion in IMF loans to steal. You set meat out in the clearing, the beast will make it a meal. Stockholm got what 
what what gave the dynamite prize to that fucking Washington? What run out of bombs? That Obama shit. Assange's trial is fixed as the dog races at Shelbourne Park. No doubt his magistrate, or but not, told Barrett to do the right thing, or her husband, Lord James, and his goons at the foreign office might do their family in. Not in so many words, mind you, but otherwise that pretty husband of hers, with a taste for gambling and whores, can join Julian and Belmarsh. Sound far-fetched? Sound harsh? The Yanks have their greatest torturer, their talk martyr. Gina Haspel is head of the CIA. Might as well have Satan herself in the Empire's pay. Or might WikiLeaks get audit of the black accounts and find at the top of the ledger the devil's name be announced. Humbling it be, watching them stone-cold killers at Albert or Langley murder thousands, women, children, and walk free. Get pet up medals and stipends. We're all to keep bread on me table and butter in the larder, clip one or two, and but thugs, mind ya, worse than apes in a zoo, and I'll be nicked and beat and the screws not to shit me out for a decade or two. And this bloke of songs, with no blood on his hands, locked in the can, tortured, broken, but no, shed no tears, cause mind ya, that's what the screws do. While Julian stares down the barrel of a hundred and seventy-five years. No, our kind don't join the ranks. We got too much creed for that. Don't kill no mites for one thing. Collateral or no, not like your fucking G.R. Joe here. What goes ripping apart bodies at funerals and wedding parties. Fuck them! Fuck them all! Fuck all the Yanks! And fuck Her Majesty's forces too. What well, don't force us when a stretching bell marshal do. No, we gangsters don't join the ranks to fight the fucking rich man's wars. We fight our own. What well, beef we be the source. We fight our own where there be a bit of honor left. For all honor of them fucks in power be bereft. And I, I'd just like to finish up briefly uh, with uh, uh, just the last 30 lines of a poem that appears in uh, Bill DeVault's collection of mine uh, called uh, Isaac Newton Scald or Abraham Prophesies the End of the World. It's, a, it's, a, it's an elegy to a, a, a poet you probably never heard of, a Roman Augustan poet named Albino Vanus. Uh, who wrote an epic that uh, at the time was said to rival Ovid. Uh, but the problem is, and, and this is the problem with much of immortality, especially uh, back then, is most all but 23 lines are lost. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, the last uh, 30 lines of my elegy to Albino Vavis. It's Albino Vanus Pado, and it's called... Uh, destiny deals from the bottom of the deck. The fugitive, fugitives flee, Pedro, from your soul surviving insight. Twenty-three lines, but a, a ravaging keepsake found upon Seneca's portico. Hardly divine, though tried, not fledged with immortality and ignored, and vile when not. My observation of Roman legions already wary of viral man as we violate with our oars over the seas. No postscripts of enlightened beneficence. We at ease, our oars, styluses, brushes, and keyboards, as Meth Macbeth said of this new man, making the green one red. No current venture capital Cassandra abides his inner frog. The lesson the Enlightenment fails to account is destiny deals from the bottom of the deck. Ten thousand lines which in beauty rivaled Virgil and in apocalyptic prophecy rages in the surviving 23. A sign, the core, the dark matter of mankind's tragic Newtonian flaw 
dancing in the ruins of our own free will, as the prep school cowpoke snarls. And certain not to disappoint, given such freedom to fail, the rest, man, poet, epic, and war drawn down, when shipwreck was not some cinematic suburban metaphor. Where so small, granular, I scattered spectra of an end far greater than my own, and that wisdom unwise can warrant exile, as certain as Galileo's cities on the moon. So, Pato, where does that leave the park I and I? I own no storied bridle and lance, nor sea and shipwreck to lean upon. What leverage are my words against Morta's snip? Shall I fall upon that sword and hope under some blade to not rise again, to grow sh go shrouded like a scorned Lazarus meekly to my end, my words refrigerated like a severed head, intact, mortal, and unread? Thank you. Have a good festival. As always, very impressive and very true. Hello, Bengt. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you here. I will present your poem uh, on Sunday with uh, the international poets and, I know. Um, and some uh, but i announce it because you are one of our best cards <laughs> okay thank you uh, i'm well, feeling very proud thank you <laughs> yeah well uh there there will be also some uh, american poets on saturday that asked me uh, to be presented on Sunday, so they watch and come and talk with us. And uh, also there, there are some uh, videos of um, uh, people that um, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh. edit them yet. So <laughs> it was some big, bigger than the others. So uh, they will go uh, there. Uh, the, the last day. Uh, we will proceed now to Let the... Let me just say, Carissa, you're an excellent host. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, thank you. We will proceed to the next uh, video. This is uh, something we did, uh, uh, a bit, a, a little video for the festival. And the surprise is that uh, someone I, that I love a lot. Chris Vanoy uh, says something to us in this video. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B? B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what. B is a kid. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is B? crying out on a night of booty stars? Over his... So. I think uh, the next video came uh, uh, up <laughs> uh, by itself, and so I will go again and share it now. Because William is a very, a great part. The New Mexico Blues. I wept upon the antlers tonight, above the starlit expanses of my solitude, where the plastic and concrete monoliths of the city that is my Patterson converge on the brow muddy currents of eternity. At the theater, the backdrops I paint for Sam Shepard's plays weep for red and orange sinuous hills in burnt umber silhouettes against the sky. I will walk the barren high levee tonight. The rose-tipped southwest wind will caress my soul, bone deep. This was William. <laughs> and we go to the next one. You see, Paselli, 
William is very short. He 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 says everything uh, very. Uh, we are talkative. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they must forgive us. We have a lot to, to say. <laughs> Um, well, we will proceed with a woman, uh, uh, Miss, Mrs. Uh, Anita Caprice, Dr. Anita Caprice, that uh, we met uh, in the Goddess Festival. She is a great woman. Uh, a great poetess uh, that we met in the Goddess uh, Festival, the festival of uh, the beat woman, <laughs> let's say, that want to be goddesses and not um, victims. <laughs> well, let's uh, hear, let's listen to her. Inside the beautiful darkness shines brilliant light. The separation of the sky above from the mighty deep below. The earth, the earth is solidified and the treasures of nature originates. The cosmos of the sun and the formation of the moon. Denizen of the deep glide and birds fly in the blue yonder. The animals traverse the solid surface of the earth. A child of the universe is born. Six days of manifestation, then rest, and in time, the stars twinkle at night, the moon gives light, and the sun shines so bright, and in the continuum, a child of creation is born. A beautiful child, a magnificent child, a child with the power, presence, and love that resides inside. A child created in the image of I am that I am, the Genesis, and to reminisce, as Og Mandino says, at birth before our first cry, God whispered in our ear and said, you are the greatest miracle on earth. Now she grows up to be a beautiful woman and he grows up to be a magnificent man who's walked through the fire and ran through the storm. And there's jazz in the pep. And of course, there's authority in each step. Now she mimics no one and he has his own unique style and Lord have mercy, my oh my, they both light up the room with their smile. See, walking into the room, eyes glistening with energy, shared thought expressed, we listen, ah, that beautiful synergy. See, there is power in this space and it radiates forth from within inside the brilliance of love and light permeating the atmosphere. The vibrational aura of the two vibrant as the rainbow of color. Strength abide, they tap into their power inside. Loyal and committed, energy loving and pure. Pure as gold, bold, gold, bold, strong and remarkable. Unbreakable, sometimes shakable, yet mm, unstoppable, brilliant as the diamond sparkle. Their soul is truly remarkable, remarkable spirit nourishing and protective. A glorious miracle be he and she, and it is so easy to see that the creator resides inside this child, this woman. This man, this glorious miracle, and it be you and me. Thank you for listening. I am Anita Caprice, also known as Artist Angel. Blessings, peace, and love. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B? B was, so I told him. B is not a what? B is it is. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is B? crying out on a night of bloody stars? What I fear most. What I fear most is a lack of collaboration. Mind, body, 
Spirit, if it exists, bowing out at different times. Dad did it right, sang me a song before he died, walked and talked, and only lay down to give us a heads up. It was time to say so long. I fear being unable to walk or talk when my mind is sharp, unable to say, I love you. Take care of each other. Feed the dog. Think I'll die now. Or worse, to exist in forgetfulness, to grieve my missing mind, not knowing if the person who says, I love you, Mom, is really my child or an imposter? To strike out anger and frustration at visitors who don't want to be there, or the caregiver who changes my diapers. I fear wanting to die and being kept alive. I fear lingering until friends and family hate themselves for contemplating murder. I fear there will be no partner to pull the plug. What I fear most is a lack of collaboration. What do you think about our woman poets? I want to say something about the first thing you said about short poems and long poems. I'm, I'm currently working on a poem. I, I, this is I'm maybe inappropriate. Uh, and, and the baser is, um, is um, Publius uh, 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 Claudius um, uh, Polker and his sister Claudia Matelli. And as I read the books that form the research behind it, I find so many nuances that <clears throat> that um, that you just you just realize that life is not as simple as a lot of the shorter poems make it out to be. Uh, that that the exclusion. Of, uh, of, of really the conflicts that exist within the context of even the short poems that could be explored are not explored. And uh, I think the, the poem I read uh, is one of those, it fails in that regard too, because there are so many details that I did not, I did not research to my uh, satisfaction in writing that poem. And I feel among all of, all of the work I've done in the last few years in this monologue style, uh, that, that is one of the least interesting poems. Uh, 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 Jack, Jack Hirschman liked it, called it excellent. So I went along with, with that, but um, so much of my other work where I explore the nuances and the, and the, um, the ironies and the conflicts that arise within working in a, a much larger style create a much, a much more profound poem. I don't care, nobody's gonna read it, of course, because people are not into that kind of profundity now. They can't handle it. It's like Eliot says, mankind cannot stand too much reality. But I just wanted to point that out. Uh, as far as the woman, the, the last two poems, no comment. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are, uh... There are poets that uh, say that uh, poetry is written by men. <clears throat> well, you know, I, 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 when, when, when Belinda asked me to, for an interview and she asked about my influences, they were all men. But none of, the, uh, none of them were living. I, don't, I think they were all dead. <laughs> and so that's where I stand on that. I think, I think the traditional canon has a tremendous amount of validity. I think it's very difficult to argue against Virgil or Ovid or Shakespeare or Chaucer or Byron or Shelley or Keats. I think you'd be a fool to try to argue against any of those. Sorry to argue, but sub four was short and a woman. And she still lives. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Sub four. Oh, Sappho. Yeah, yeah, Sappho. Yeah, sub four. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I. You, know, you don't I've understand Sappho. Sappho. You don't I've, understand Sappho. <laughs> I don't. Why I don't, she was saying so little I, things. <laughs> I'm I'm not really intrigued by love poetry. I, uh, 
in any form. Uh, it, it is a big uh, question about about if she was uh, uh, was writing only uh, love poetry, lyric well, poetry. She was know, not uh, writing this exactly. Anyway, <laughs> she could she could say something in that epoch that was. Uh, Extremely different, different from uh, what they believe, what over believed about the woman, and um, she she could not be very talk talkative because uh, uh, afterwards the she she would be banished. <laughs> Let's say. Yeah, anyway. uh, yeah. I mean, there is that, right? I, and there is that tradition, but I I have to say it's like uh, I'll be an Obanus Pato. If it's not there, it's not there. You know, if it, <laughs> what's there is there. He's, you know, the 23 lines that exist of his have such a, not only are they brilliant in Latin or in, in translation, but he talks about an, a secular apocalypse that is traveling this myth of Tephas, traveling to the end of the earth. Yeah. The subject is, is the failure of Germanicus to, um, in, in his campaign, in 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 the in the Roman Western frontier, but he, he talks about r really the end of the world in such a profound way that it resonates now. But you can't talk about the end of the world in eight lines. I mean, <laughs> it's just not. It's not. It's yeah. a it's a complicated situation. I'm in dialogue with people all day about that because that was the nature of my work for the first forty years. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. I think that uh, there is two kinds of poet, of uh, poet, two kinds of poetry, many kinds of poetry, of course. But uh, um, uh, uh, on the length, if we talk about the length, the small poems are more meta uh, uh, use uh, use a lot the metaphor too much the metaphor, and they are uh, more for thinking. And the, the long poems are, um, are what the poet wants, in fact, to talk. It is um, to express himself. So they're more expressive, they're more um, prolific, uh, and uh, say a lot. I don't know if um, you can think a lot after after a, a long poem. Uh, perhaps uh, this is the the difference. Perhaps so. some people th uh, think, of course, but after a long poem, after a small a, a short poem, they can um, they can imagine things. They can uh, talk to themselves. Yeah, but you know, it's- This it, is what I, I, I think. But you know, it's like in the, in the thing I read, uh, the, the comment of, of, uh, of, uh, of Barry about uh, the last time that uh, the Bow Bells, that's, that's the East End of London, had seen, had seen the kind of carnage that uh, you, the United States was, was laying on the Middle East was, was the Bosch. Well, the yeah. Bosch were the Germans. So you now you have there is this, a metaphor too. Now, now yeah. you're going into all kinds of interesting things. I mean, you're, he's comparing the Americans to the Nazis, which I think is a valid comparison, a highly valid comparison. And but he's also relating. He's 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 taking you back into a to a history. Uh, I mean, and, and so it's so much richer than the lyric. It's it it really yeah. and it's so much and it. And it lays so close to reality. That's why my magazine focused on, on the ambition of the high modernist epic, the you know the Ezra Pounds and the T. S. Eliots and the James Joyces and that sort of thing, because it 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 it's just it just does so much more than the lyric, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I've never really been very appreciative of the lyric. So a few of the highest progenitors of it, I I admire Keats. To a certain extent, uh, Yates, maybe you know, but but uh, uh, most of the people, it's really for me, it's the epic, 
It's, it's yeah. that and kind of ambition. Because if the poet's willing to put that kind of ambition into it, the reader's going to, and it's good, the reader's going to get that kind of ambition out of it. You know, he's going to learn, he or she is going to learn a hell of a lot. Now, but learning is out. I, I realize that learning is not something what anybody wants to do anymore, but I still stand by its efficacy. And so okay. That's just okay. my thing. Let's move <laughs> on here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. I mean, I, I noticed there's just a handful of us here, so we can yeah. talk, frankly. <laughs> uh, yes, well, uh, now we will see Belinda Superman. We, uh, she's a poet from Texas and a great poet and uh, musician and she has a great podcast from from which we <laughs> we all uh, passed uh, with ve uh, with very good uh, uh, thoughts about it. My dream life saved me. Anxiety and depression overdosed my youth. The unbalanced girl squeaked by on dreams and wit. I attended my father's death in the same room that was mine. In this house, his own hands built. I stayed beside him his last three days with implosive intensity. I'm visiting that room now where also I napped five years old curled up on a coat on the floor before bed was put in. I am both nailed to and freed by this room. It was death and new life. I discovered orgasm here. I have returned to leave again. Reincarnation, yada yada, cycle of life. I'm happy now. But no, it can change in the wind or a dream. Visiting my 90-year-old mother. Power is tyranny in the hands of the hurt. Pain is transferred if not healed. Sounds of comfort surround me. The house purrs through baseboard grates. The furnace white noise of my youth. The brownie page in the heirloom cookbook is chocolate stained. It wasn't all bad. To bathe or not, I honor my father's soap twelve years since he's used it. It sits untouched in its dish on the lip of a cast iron basin. Remembering, perhaps, it was the last object to touch him intimately. No one cleans here anymore. Water comes out yellow with chunks of rust to remind us everything decays. I'm told I may use it if I make the water run clear. And don't use daddy soap letting the unseen molecules of my father linger. This neglect is a ritual of love, not cleanliness. It's a shrine, not a tub. I pay my respects by noticing and find clean water elsewhere. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what B, B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what. B is a bit. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is B? crying out on a night of booty stars? Anyway, although this Newtonian quote is used a lot, it is still true that we stand on the shoulders of giants. There is a certain giant that I want to share now by the name of Lawrence Ferlinghetti. This is a poem he wrote entitled, Pity the Nation.
pity the nation whose people are sheep and whose shepherds mislead them. Pity the nation whose leaders are liars, whose sages are silenced, and whose bigots haunt the airwaves. Pity the nation that raises not its voice except to praise conquerors and acclaim the bully as hero and aims to rule the world by force and by torture. Pity the nation that knows no other language but its own and no other culture but its own. Pity the nation whose breath is money and sleeps the sleep of the too well fed. Pity the nation, oh, pity the people who allow their rights to erode and their freedoms to be washed away. My country, tears of thee, sweet land of liberty. Thank you. Well, Mr. Bob, Mac Bob McNeil, that I, uh, I knew a long time, uh, he's my friend uh, on, on Facebook, uh, chose a poem of uh, a fairly Gettys poem uh, to honor him. Uh, this was very humble, and we thank, thank him for this. So, let's hear Corpus. When you feel the truth as it stares in your face And all you see are lies running rampant in space Do you rise to the occasion and get up on your feet? Or do you sink in the pit and let them cause you defeat? When your day is over, lie awake in your bed Do you reflect upon the day and feel the craze in your head That the world is turned to madness in a path of separation Can we not find a balance and a means of reparation? Have we dumbed down our senses to shut out the pain And drugged out the ethical quest in our brain To the point that we justify our leaders' dark deeds And ignore the noble nature of our God-given creeds My days by the sunrise and the sunset Better than that it doesn't get The gift of gab lets me handle any subject My mind conceives of all objects My heart is full of love and respect My feet get me safely to where I'm going next So I never hold on to any regrets Don't take what I say out of context The meaning of life they say is a secret As above so below we give and we get Forsake me not, forgo my debt Cause there was an elder that I once met She taught me stories of bloodlines And though she beget in time and in stone The rules were set At the end of the day, I could forgive and forget So let me say to you now If I haven't yet Not by might nor by power But by the spirit And we must see truth Let it be Who can't fight Strength in the living The giving in love In truth So many people With no visions of thriving Whose everyday goal Is merely surviving And the powers that be Lost in clutches of greed Unaware of the desperate Cries of such need War zones of danger Along every road Where the slightest misstep Causes worlds to explode Have our hearts turned to stone? Do we no longer hear? And instead build up walls Just to shut out the fear Distracted by gadgets And glory and fame Have we lost the essential Point of this game? As justice for all Gets swept under the rug Do we stand up? Or do we just cynically shrug?
Recitation, your performance. Uh, you, you are a performance uh, every time. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. Yeah, I, I thought. I thought and, this. And I want to say that uh, I admire your positiveness and uh, your um, spirituality. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you uh, uh, what do you think about uh, the last song po poem I, that <laughs> was awesome yeah. that was absolutely awesome you know <laughs> I'm learning keyboard to uh, uh, so music can accompany my poetic affirmations, that was so inspiring. Um, that was just, <laughs> I mean, I was just like amazed that the creativity of merging the words and even the, the body mannerisms, the, um, the guitar and, and the sister on the keyboard with her, you know, with, with, with her appearance. I mean, all of it. It was just, uh, it, all of it was in sync. And that, that was yes. just beautiful. And then I, you have the I words. Liked, first, uh, I, 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 I didn't uh, hear the, the, the words. I was uh, thinking that the music is very nice. I was dancing when I, ha uh, I, I had it for the first time because uh, I'm from Greece and uh, I don't understand right away what I hear. <laughs> well, when I, um, I, uh, I listened to it uh, more carefully, uh, I saw that uh, it is a, a very good poem. Uh, about something that tortures us uh, le lately, and uh, that will be the the theme of many artists from now on, uh, because it attaches something that it is very uh, very important. Absolutely. We cannot show emotions through this uh, situation with COVID, etc. And we cannot show our emotions freely to others, hugs, uh, people that need all this expression cannot be free anymore. And uh, this is very um, attractive to an artist who works with emotions. I think. Yes. Yes. And something else. Do you believe that uh, um, it is a bit uh, difficult question? Um, in uh, Europe, we have a, a great revolution of people that uh, are fighting against uh, vaccination. Yes. And um, the, the, the governments uh, are very severe against these people uh, to the point that uh, they, um, uh, they fire them. They don't let them go in uh, the, um, in the buses, in the trains. They don't let them um, go freely uh, to where they want to go. They uh, don't uh, let them anyway. Uh, they um, don't permit them have the freedom they should as uh, 
as people. What do you think about? Well, I guess, you know, I will be coming more as a grandmother. For me, um, I have grandchildren who their ages are too young to get the, vac the, the, the vaccine. So my position with them, like I got the vaccine because I want to be able to protect my grandchildren as best I can. Me too. And I want to make sure that I... And, and that I'm taking care of myself as best I can so that I don't harm anyone else. It reminds me when I was in corrections for 19 years. Well, four of those years before I left, I worked in the prison and we had we were mandated to take the hep C vaccine vaccine. So a lot now, now of course we weren't mandated, you know, if we didn't have it. It wasn't that we couldn't get on the bus or we couldn't go into a store. However, we would lose our job because if you did not take that vaccine, if there was no contraindication, you were going to lose it. So I guess my position is it, it's, it's one of those, I, I believe we all have a right to do as we feel that that is good for us. My position is that that once we make that decision, then I think that I think I think the, the consideration needs to be also considered because if I'm someone who I choose not to do have the vac the vaccine, then then that's fine for me. And then I'm my position is I'm one who 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 has who has had the vaccine administered. And my position is if that's what you want to do, then I understand, appreciate, and respect that but I do not want you in my space. Mm. That's my right. So, you know, it's not like I'm saying, I was just sharing with my grandson. I said, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just an it thing. Mm. This is the way it is right now. This is just what the day of, of the time is. So with the vaccine, I, I understand both sides. But again, for me, I've, I've gotten my doses. And as soon as I was able to get mine, that's what I did. Because for me, again, I want to be able to do all I can to not be the, the cause or conduit of having someone else whose immune system may be weaker than mine. Okay. Uh, my friends, uh, I, I will say my opinion too, since I touched the, uh, this uh, problem. Uh, I have friends that uh, did not uh, uh, take the vaccine okay. and uh, uh, I, uh, I keep them in my company, but they are very, very uh, careful. They are mm -hmm. too careful, uh, much more careful than me because they respect me. Yes. So anyway, um, to be too much severe to to these people that are very careful and try to um, to keep all the uh, the precautions towards yes. others um, sometimes uh, reminds me of racism it is not but it could be mm -hmm. for some uh, governments it could be um, a, it could be a, a way to push people more, to restrain people more. Anyway, I hope that it will, will not happen. I I I do too. I I, I do too. I um, I as far as with the shots. I mean, we've had the flu shot. We've had so many shots. This is not the first time that there's yeah. been a pandemic. This is not the first time. And it's not the, it's not the people. And, and, and it, 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 to me, it's more broader than that. For me, it, it's, it's okay, I, I don't take the shot. I, I'm taking precautions. My, my position is, okay, the people that you may come in contact with, you have to look at that as well. It's like driving a car. It's, yeah. you know, I, I may be a good driver, but I've got to look out for these other drivers. It's not just about me. 
You know what I mean? And that's that's um, that's my concern for, for me. It's, it's, it's more of a, this is a human, humanity thing. It's not just about me. It's not just about my rights. It's about the whole global environment yeah. that we all need to take into consideration. Unfortunately, we are in a very, in a very, very difficult situation where we don't know how to feel. Yeah. Fact, we don't know how to feel sometimes. Anyway, let's go further and Thank hear you. the poets. Can I can I just Thank interject you. one yes. thing? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I think uh you're you uh, Chris, you're uh, obliquely referencing things like the Tuskegee Institute experimentation, MK Ultra. Mm -hmm. MK Ultra program. Uh, that, uh, you know, uh, where they introduced uh, hallucinogenic drugs into, uh, into the culture uh, th through these, these cutouts. Uh, and so there's been a lot of experimentation and, uh, and, there's, and there's reasons to feel, to feel, you know, that there's, there could be something wrong, uh, something nefarious in, in this. But I think, I think one of the things that we have in America, Krissa, is we have this pride in our stupidity, and there's a lot of people that that and it's and it's it's really endemic that think that ignorance is is a is a form of democratic expression, and uh, and there are pe there are people playing upon this with this and pan and pandemic, uh, who are who are putting out uh, disinformation because they're increasing their power bases. They do that, and. Uh, I, 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 for one, I, like, uh, I got the vaccination as soon as I could. Uh, I have pulmonary problems. If I had even the, the mildest case originally, I, without the vaccine, I'd be dead in hours. So um, uh, I, I, I just, uh, there, there, there's a, I don't know about Europeans. I always had generally more respect for a, a Europeans' prop, a European ability to discriminate and educate themselves. But in America, there really is a there really is a huge fa fa um, a, a huge number of people that think um, by going against this they show their individuality mm. and they or they they express yeah I agree their ignorance I agree I agree I agree and, and, I don't talk about them I didn't talk about them I talk no. about other people that have their reasons as there are many people that don't take uh, other vaccines. Uh, for example, the flu vaccine. They don't the want polio, to take... the polio vaccine. Yeah, the polio. I mean, yeah, they don't take the polio vaccine, so they can't walk. No, uh, polio has been completely wiped out. There's a difference between the flu and polio and and this current virus. I mean, it's just it's like the Tocqueville said when he came over here. He said, "I've never seen a population with less independence of mind than Americans." And Americans think they have this tremendous independence of mind, yet they're too goddamn stupid. To really, <laughs> yes, yes. To there really are make, people that to, to are... Make, uh... To make the discrimination between this virus and, and uh, whatever they want to compare it to, you know, a, a hangnail. So basically, I have no sympathy for them. I digress uh, I, uh, from Anita's position. So fuck them. And I don't want them fucking me over or any people I love by not getting vaccinated. And, uh, and so basically just fuck them. So <laughs> that's my opinion. Many opinions. Yeah. Uh, I just met uh, many people that are free uh, and uh, in Europe, of course, not in America. Um, well, we've exported <laughs> stupid now for a long time. The U.S. Okay. is, is okay, monumentally okay. stupid country. This uh, uh, virus made us uh, put us in war. In fact, uh, of opinions and many people that are not uh, stupid, as you say, and they are not um, also fanatic with this thing. Um, Suffer from all this uh, 
problems that uh, the, the vaccination produce. Anyway, uh, perhaps uh, they should uh, be vaccinated, as I did. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Uh, a young poet from uh, Tennessee, I think. My name is Port Darren B. Rankin, reciting the poem, You Lack. You lack the pressure of reality. That's why you're drowning in an ocean of fantasy. Now come closer, closer, and listen and learn, for the darkness has no light. I'm the Port Heaven Valley. White clouds, blue waters, cover my soul entirely whole. Reciting the poem, Pain. Sharp, pointed, need a prick. With force, without pity, my grain begins. Thank you. Close your eyes, my sweet. And if you promise to sleep, I will tell you a story of the ancestors and how we came to be. Once upon a time in the dark of night, just at the edge of morning light, the strange ones came, declaring peace was their game, offering gifts to lure us near, promising us no need to fear. It was our innocence that caught us blind, unaware we should fear their kind. It is said they called us animals fundamentally unchangeable. It is said that we were captured, our friends and families fractured. It is said they bought and sold us and even boiled us for breakfast. It is said they put us in cages to observe our different stages of terror. It is said we became warriors. We broke down all their barriers. We sent them back from where they came. We purged their data from our mainframe. And so the lesson is, my sweet young thing, never ever leave our galaxy. Ever trust an earthling. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B? B was, so I told what him. Is B? B is not a what. B is a bid. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying B? out on a night of bloody stars? This is Joe Kidd in Detroit, here to honor the excellent poets that we're gathered here for today, and also 
all the great poets that have come and gone before us and to uh, declare that we will not be interrupted again. We will not be silenced by those who ignore truth or by a hail of bullets into our soft membranes or a storm of propaganda into our pristine brains. We will not be crippled by the interpretations of fools of our dreams of laughter and joy or by the failure of a redesigned machine. No, we will not rely on that or any other object created to deceive the innocent. We will not be intimidated by forces beyond our reach that require the outward stretch of our hand or our imagination. We will not be paralyzed by fear of beauty or hatred of friendship or poverty or disease or starvation or loneliness or death. We will not be blinded by the darkness that exists in the soul of every human or the light from that which is called upon for salvation, redemption, or creation. We will not be brutalized by time, the ever-present enemy of youth, of calm, of health, of trust, of activity. We will not be forced to our knees by gravity, the pull of guilt, of regret, of sorrow, of grief, of death, of dread, or of desire. We will not cave into pressure to the insistence or the pleading from others for our conformity, our surrender to anxiety, to incompetence. We will not fall victim to crime, to cruelty, to immorality, to gluttony, or to self-importance. We will not be stifled or hindered by the treachery of false commitment or honor or duty or obligation. We will not be limited by boundaries, by atmospheres, by descriptions, by dialect, by expectations, or by restraints. We will not be overwhelmed by belief, overcome by need, or overpowered by age. We will not be distracted by distrust, disillusionment, dissatisfaction, or disappointment. We will not be incarcerated by the horror of spilt blood and broken bones. We will not be interrupted again. Welcome to the festival. Hi everyone, I'm John Burroughs, the Ohio. And then he came today and tomorrow, <laughs> twice. <laughs> anyway, uh, since he is very cute, we will hear him today too. Hi everyone, I'm John Burroughs, the Ohio Beat Poet Laureate uh, for 2019-2021. Welcome, and wow, such wonderful people being uh, nominated for these awards this year and, uh, and receiving these awards, and I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but my daughter is getting married this weekend, so I'm staying in Ohio for that. But I'm there also, part of me in spirit, at the festival. Uh, this is a poem from my uh, book, 
Rattle and Numb, which was published by Venetian Spider Press. And the poem is entitled Alarm Blocks. <clears throat> I awoke with a stack of bricks on my chest. Bloody, dull, red blocks forming a hard, slimy, semi-conscious arc. And it was death to touch, as seen in Exodus, after the flood in Genesis, where two of every species, wooden stallions, stone night mares, weighed on my horse sense and sanity, and I screamed, Sanctify me! But I was already a saint, as well as a sitcom, a 60s love song steeped in dung. Steeple chased because some animal church wants to make me fox trot in tempo with the braying boy Pinocchio. Wants to make me hog its slops like pig pen, make something grateful and dead. Wants to make me change the litter in its offering box as I swill from and fill it like Chairman Meow, dog sick beyond the ability of any drama mean or drama there to keep me from falling into the who of you better. You bet I stuck cotton up my nose while thinking this whole dream has to be real because it smells funkier than red, white, and blue shorts on James Brown in a cold sweat in a rocky screenplay set to feature Sylvester Stone singing family affair and I awoke with a stack of four children on my chest and four adults had us covered nearly smothered trying to put us out and back to sleep perchance to scream Sometimes I screech like a mystical magpie, only to awaken again in muffled madness, recalling funerals follow many wakes. And this is why I need not set the alarm clock and always try to sleep on top of the blankets. Matthew Bowers. Dancing without a name. She was naked in her silence. Stone statues and salutations. Desires from a Hellenistic waterfront. Ancient scriptures reveal hidden sources. Among the fiery chariots and beat up taxis. Neon lights flicker to the rhythm of abandoned youth. In a holy glory brought on by the atomic age, birds swell like waves in the evening sky. Lightning fires of brilliance in the skulls of men, and heroes fall like mad children. Women dine upon wine and gold. Winter months take Persephone's hand, and fear takes refuge upon the land, and freedom of expression is lost in cancel culture news. We must break the shackles of adversity the tyranny, irony of authoritative views with a new generation if we are to continue. Empty vessels writhe in terror and ancient tombs have come to rest. Serpents whisper feral secrets 
Mortals fall before Rasputin's lies. Masks of deception mock the loose pain of martyrs. Blazing pyres choke lost soul. Nothing gathers for vermin smiles. In death, the prophet seals its final truth. Eclipsing the lost innocence of Dante's muse, clandestine splendor, unclean deception. Infernal despair before the abyss, broken rain falls from eternal nights. Bowers is a very good poet. He has only one disadvantage. He tags too much. <laughs> anyway, uh, I saw before that uh, Mr. Ian uh, Gibbons came in. Uh, perhaps he went away. Anyway, what do you think about John? He should... Uh, Leave her daughter <laughs> go to the festival. <laughs> no. Uh, John Wesik, you didn't uh, uh, tell us something. So you're saying that John Burroughs did not attend his daughter's wedding to come uh, to the beach festival? He, he attend, but all the time he comes, he sa says videos, he comes to, to the uh, meeting. Uh, of uh, the Lorettes afterwards. I think he's too... Um, he shows himself too much. No. No, I love John. Oh, uh, you're getting tired of John Burns, <laughs> is what you're saying, huh? I love John. I want to tease him. Yeah, well, he was, he was a nice guy, I thought. You know, he, he said anytime in Ohio, he offered me his couch to sleep on. So, you know, yeah, good for him. he's great. Uh, what do you think about his poetry? Because I'm a fan of John. Yeah, same yeah, here. I'm, I'm a fan. Yeah. I like I like it. I, I think uh, last time I came uh, in America I, and I met this poet, uh, I found a, pas a person that uh, dares to be passionate. Yeah. Uh, really passionate and um, use the words uh, in a, um, in a, uh, not, I, I would say, in a dirty way. He does to, to, to use the words, uh, in yeah. the words he wants to use. Well, let me ask you a question then. What is it in poetry that you look for and what is it? What kind of poetry do you like? What what makes a poem that you like as opposed to a poem that you don't like? I? Yes, you. Well, yes, I forgot I'm a poet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a consumer of poetry. You listen to poetry. Yeah, the poems that you hear. To, to persuade you that I'm a physics, a physics teacher, but... Uh... <laughs> hey, I'm, I've got a I found a voice there. <laughs> well, what is poetry for me? Um, poetry for me is seems to be seems to be because they told me that what I I write is poetry. Yeah. Uh, is uh, what you want really to say your real re real self that you want to express, but you cannot. Uh, you cannot say it um, like prose. You must uh, keep the rhythm. You, you have something inside you that stops you to be um, concrete. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Concrete. Uh, you want to give a, 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 to take a distance and from your emotions and um, in the same way to give them um, a, lo a longevity, to watch them. Yeah. And on the other hand, uh, I, I usually think when I read my poems, I w I'm wondering if I was, um, it was me that uh, was writing. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, story. yeah, uh, I've. Uh, it, it taking is dictation from God. Huh? It is something else that speaks from me. It yeah. is not uh, Risa, uh, the everyday woman. Um, uh, it is um, something that I, th I, f I find ma magic. Um, mm. uh, I cannot stop it. Mm. Okay. And uh, I started to, uh, as, as for other poets, uh, I, I admire and um, observe miracles around me, mm. human miracles. This is poets for me. Okay. They... And I, oops, sorry. And, and, and you, I saw that interview you did with, uh, the parrot too, and you stress that this impulse to write, you can't avoid it. Yeah. Uh, and, and the other thing you mentioned, you're talking about enduring poetry. And to go back to your native language, because um, Ezra Pound said the three essentials to poetry, now he's talking about imagism, but were logopia, phanopia, and melopia. <laughs> and uh, that would sort of, that covers the whole ground. If a poem yeah. has all three of those <laughs> elements to it, then it's it's way ahead of the game yeah and, uh, and that's what uh, i look for and uh, on the other hand uh, when i, I was um, I, I realized uh, when i i get more mature i i i i've been more mature that i was uh, reading poetry since i was little and uh, many poets told me that uh, there is no many people that understand and want to read poetry uh, and some of them can be poets some of them who understand who understand poetry can be poets a few of them uh, i was thinking that uh, um, i was amusing myself i was uh, entertaining myself when i was uh, uh, when i was reading poetry it was something like natural to me. Uh, I, I remember uh, myself to read poetry when I was 12. Hmm. Too little, I think, uh, or um, anyway, uh, but I wrote poetry when I overflowed. Hmm. I was uh, an oral poet. I was thinking in rhythm. I was thinking, I, I, and when I was writing, um, I didn't want to show it. But when my emotions overflowed, I, and I couldn't stop it, then I started to shout, to shout poetry. This is what happened to me. Okay, all right, cool. Good question, John. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Next. Uh, Rich is uh, also a person that I admire. And I'm, uh, we met last year. He's a poet laureate um, from California. Days, days, days. Days, days, days. Days feeling like a throwaway line from a song about Ben done wrong. Days hanging themselves with nooses of self doubts. Days grown restless and feverish. All the leprous, isolation, zombie walks across killing floors of uncertain tomorrows. Days, days, days. Days hogtied by heartache, feeling the boot heel of disappointment grind into our backs. Days longing to be the pillow in that 
bed where love lays its head down to rest. Days, days, days. Days where all is quiet and still, the earth rotating on an axis of unagony. Days where there is steadiness, the ground bearing no rupture or grief. As if the dead below us are refusing to undance our dance of future dreams. Sandra sent the two poems, but I couldn't choose. They were both beautiful. I'm Sandra Feen. Folds. There it was, an amber ring, lost in the folds of paisley, left in the dust of an old tin sewing box, found in the attic solace. What password slipped through the neat pleats of her mind and into the sharpened heartbeat of now? Something brought her steps to surprise. Urgent, her treasure. Parental cause, effect. Something about how I ask the waitress for coleslaw startles you into my mouth. I ask for it softly, meekly, the way you always did, even emphasize the awe in slaw, the way we memorize what was left of your Connecticut childhood accent like a prayer. You have no place to go but spill onto my breasts on your way to my torso, remind me my breasts are your breasts, as tiny as your frame remained. Your breasts defied your size, but your petite frame, the part of me that always trembles your name, defy my landscape of sizes. Your foreign language of white scars climb my arms too. I survey the map of us while I blot lipstick. Dad suffered his third stroke last week, but because we made sure he avoided hospital, lifted himself from a fog that vows to keep thickening. On a Labor Day weekend, not two years ago, you comb your hair, touch up bangs, apply a light lipstick, lament you wish you weren't so old, have the look of an ill person, otherwise wait time might be short. Selfless, you loathe attention, but an ambulance might shave off minutes, return you to your home, a husband's needs, others, what defines you, but you slow things by chatting with EMTs, tell them how proud you are of the profession they chose how nice they look, then kindly scold them, refuse a wheelchair at hospital arrival. You walk, perfect posture and confidence, calm, through a welcoming entrance. Two days later, a son-in-law carries, screaming, wordless, cripple you in mismedicated, newly Disease delirium out, determined when a gurney takes you, it will be from home. On the 10th, your husband, four daughters cram onto a single living room couch. Watch enormity of unsettled silence. Your hands wash dad's clothes, ironed, including his underwear, 
for 64 years. Your hands cooked meals, spilled flour, vacuumed it up, made coffee, gave him his mug, took it back to reheat, cradled four daughters, your hands on the wheel to every dance and swim lesson, wrote list after list, wrote shorthand, your hands served him, us. He boasts missing only two days of teaching in 30 years, managed a nursing home after, published, succeeded in every career he retired, but you never retired. And I am part of a team who works to replace you, continue the habit to care, the habit to enable. Once upon a time, I was deemed hardest to love by my father. Once three sisters agreed, he was hardest on me growing up and youngest executor closest to my age was around to witness scenes erased from my memory. She runs to the basement. His words too harsh, sits in a rocker, uses both her fists to punch her head, wishes it were her instead of me. Today, dark irony plays constant ringing in her ears with tinnitus as instrument and a cyst in head benign. She places baked potatoes, pre-made sandwiches in refrigerator for dad with your tenderness and precision, places neat instructional notes for caregivers on each item. Both executors say dad's congestion in his brain makes him mellower. The word sorry staccatos current conversations. He smiles often, asks me to play the piano, sing my funny Valentine. His oldest daughter's out of state called daily, write letters, send cookies, footstools, and floor lamps in the mail. He is amorous with some caregivers. Sometimes a handshake lingers. Sometimes his hand touches a wrist, elbow, back. Words syrup to flirtation, desserts mom would have loved to receive. He veers from his walker, waltzes a few steps with one, asks me which women are married. I say, keep your hands to yourself. I get a call from my sister as I write this. She says, caregiver called her, complained. Dad asked caregiver to shower with him. Another gurney inches closer and now my dear Tom Woodruff with a very short poem if you wonder where I am I've gone back to the garden they say it started between the Tigris and Euphrates I say it started in the independent republic of South Austin Texas which is the homeopathic antidote to the right-wing extremism of fascist Texas. If you want to know what the antidote is, it's poetry, of course. It's inside you. It's everywhere. It's inside every certificate, every award, every thing that says to us, we are part of all this world. And we have a way of being the soundtrack of change. And you are on the front line now. Your listening is more important than the speaking. Every second counts. So thank you for being tuned in to the heartbeat pulse and the living frequency of the Garden of Now. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what. B is a bit. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is B? crying out on a night of booty stars. Okay, I think I we have... saw them all for the oh. day. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the time and uh, 10 minutes before, and we talked together too. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, well, uh, thank you for helping me. 
<laughs> thank you for doing it. Did a great job. Yes, thank, thank you for hosting. Thank you. Uh, you're very um, and uh, uh, I I I was very glad to meet once more Anita. <laughs> I like her smile. I, I told her uh, it is something uh, between women. Uh, anyway, I liked a lot to to meet uh, John. John or John? John. John. Okay. Yes. And um, do you want to read us uh, something? Sure, I'll read you one. How's of that? Yes. Okay. Um, Since you didn't send the poem. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't get off the. I just didn't get, get get organized here. Here's a poem called "Regurgitate." Not your father's Taliban, not the fanatics dynamiting women and veiling Buddha statues, not the barefoot fighters shooting down deviled eggs with Roman candles. We provided. So many dumb decisions. We fought to keep fish sauce out of Russian hands, fearing pod thai and chicken vindaloo would be next when our bacon and hash browns were never in danger. We hunted down Saddam's baseball cards and didn't find so much as a 1996 Bob Hamlin under his mattress, but voters chose not to spoil a good story with the truth. At home, we forced unwed mothers into Sunday school and raided pet shops, searching for Colombian capybaras masquerading as kittens and puppies in fear of these large rodents infesting backyard swimming pools. What if America regurgitated the lies we swallowed? What if the war dead came marching out between our silver fillings? All that silver could have bought so many between meal snacks. No more students and hospital patients in debt over Twizzlers and gummy bears. In other countries, between meal snacks are a human right. Here, your only rights are bribing politicians and infecting your neighbor with COVID-19. There you go. Uh, bravo. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. I was all the time Debbie to soon Kidley, and right now I'm Chris Avelisario. Oh, you're back to yourself again. <laughs> okay. But he's sleeping. Could be. <laughs> it's, it's Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's only nine. Yes, it is late. I yeah, was I was hoping he will will tell us something. He will recite some, but uh, I think it's probably about eleven there. Yeah, it's almost 11, five yeah. hours to the UK. No, no, it is uh, it is twelve. It is 12, okay. uh, midnight. Right. Midnight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, and hope you will come tomorrow again. Not only you, but uh, everybody who is watching us. And tomorrow is a big day, as I told you before, because we will hear some uh, portraits that could not uh, come uh, in person to the festival. We will have some uh, little videos from the festival to take a sip from the festival. And um, uh, we will hear also um, a poet laureate, a merity, a merity. Um, I, I, I learned that word uh, <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, well, to um, uh, who are uh, really wonderful and they talk a lot too. <laughs> they talk a lot. So, uh, good night. Good night. Thank you for being. Thanks, Krista. Thanks for staying up late for us. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, Thank, you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Nice being with Thank everybody. You. Nice Let's meeting you. Uh, to keep the arts alive. Okay? Don't forget to keep the arts alive. I, I, I do it in purpose, this. I, I go like this. <laughs> because you can, you can keep the arts alive. Okay? Okay. Bye. We'll see you. Take care. Bye. Bye.
What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what is B? B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what. B is a bid. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying out on a night of bloody stars?